Well, I recently went over and picked up the Cold Steel Air Light, and it has quickly proved itself to be one of the best designed and laid out cold steel pocket knives for everyday carry that I've ever seen. But there's one aspect to this knife that trips itself up from being perfect. So let's have some fun together, all you blade loving peeps out there, and take a look at the Cold Steel Air Light. Well, that's right, folks. Welcome back. We're going to have some blade fun today. I'm just going to walk you through what I see in this knife. When the air light originally dropped, I was like, yeah, it's cool. Got some good lines to it, but I'll get around to it eventually. And I'm regretting that because there is so much that this knife offers as an almost perfectly balanced everyday carry tool for me and how I like to use, deploy, and have access to in my blades. And so the number one thing is the blade. At three and a half inches, it has a great, perfect utilitarian shape that's gonna be able to do so much work, regardless if it's forced into more aggressive utilitarian self-defense roles or just everyday carry cutting up a piece of food, maybe cutting an apple, opening the packaging for your kid's new toy that just arrived from app Amazon, or opening another package to another knife that you just bought after you just bought this one. So it has that capability with that great relief edge, that saber grind. I love high saber grinds on my knives. It's really, as of right now, for the last couple of years, been the grind I gravitate to, gravitate to the most. And this just does it so well because it has an eighth of an inch thick spine that holds that almost all the way through to that tip. So the tip is precise, but also have a lot of strength because it's just wider down here than some of the other like full flat grinds, say like a Delica or even, um, you know, like an Endura or something like that, that has a full flat, maybe slightly better slicer, but it lacks some strength and durability. So you're less likely to deploy it in harder use scenarios that I love doing with this cold steel. Now, the other aspect as well is that it's the new AUS 10A steel or AUS 10A steel, um, Japanese steel. This knife is made in Taiwan. Uh, I, I love this steel. I've now had it for almost two years on my Voyager and it is a phenomenal steel. And it kind of falls in between VG10 and 154CM. So it's very rust resistant, holds a good edge, but it's also easy to put an edge on and definitely holds its edge better than say like old OS 8 and other versions of the steel like um, that you might see on a kind of medium level. Uh, knife. One other quick data point for you is it has a razor sharp 90 degree spine. So if you did want to use this as like a hiking backpacker knife, this thing will throw sparks all day long. Now it's going to have Cold Steel's classic, super strong triad locking mechanism, a baton with this locking mechanism. I've done all kinds of brutality over the years to other Cold Steel's with this exact same lockup. And it's one of the strongest, if not the strongest locking mechanism on the market. It's simple, it's effective, it's a center lock back. So you're going to be able to drop that knife easily one handed, close it up. I'm able to deploy that without flicking my wrist and I had no elbow grease or work in time. The lockup was super smooth, not catchy or gritty and very quick deployment as well. It's going to have that kind of classic one screw one side, half screw on the other, but you can swap that for an ambidextrous capability. So durability is very high on the capability of this knife. Now, the other aspect is the weight and the thinness in your pocket. Now, this has G10 handle scales. It is 0 0.36 on the thickness according to my measurements. So that is super slim, but it's got a pretty wide profile, not overly wide, but you know, enough that you're able to get a lot of grip real estate. You can see there in my large size hands, I got plenty of room out the back there. It doesn't feel overly slim, but because of the G10, it doesn't have any steel liners, it comes in at 3.2 ounces. So for a three and a half inch, saber ground, eighth of an inch thick blade like this with good size G10 handles, this thing is so slim and so lightweight, you'll love carrying it. And that's not really something you find too often in cold steel knives. So it makes it very pocket friendly. You want to put it, put it in your pocket. I carry it in my basketball shorts and workout shorts and you know lightweight hikers and you don't even know it's there and doesn't take any excess real estate up. But you have this great three and a half inch, very strong and very good capable blade on you. Again, they're just hitting marks out of the park for everyday carry capability. Lightweight, 
slim, but giving you a lot of real estate, both blade and handle to work with. The pocket clip is no different. You get a really good medium ride. It's not a loop over, but it rides rather deep in the pocket and it's so slim that it's not gonna be this big clunky thing that causes hot spots in your hand or anything else like that. And it is ambidextrous, so it'll come with a spare one because it's a different, you know, each one's kind of angled differently. So you could swap it for a lefty if you want. So lefties, righties, you're gonna be happy with this. No lanyard hole, so that's a little odd, um, but I'm not a big lanyard guy on my pocket knives. I love throwing them on my fixed blades, but on my pocket knives, it doesn't, I, it's not gonna offer you a lanyard and I don't miss it in any way, shape or form. But that pocket clip, because it's so flush, it still rides on any type of pair of pants. I've thrown it on, but it doesn't create any hot spots, which is a really good thing. And guys, I just wanna take a quick time out that if you're enjoying the content in this video or other videos that we post here at Gideon's Tactical, I'd invite you to subscribe, become part of the GT family. You can do that anytime. Hit that bell icon so you can be notified because we're throwing up videos like this every single week. You can follow along as well on Facebook and Instagram where I'm throwing up behind the scenes stuff, up and coming things, and it's another way to interview face and interact with me here at the channel. So we appreciate all of you lifers that have been here since the beginning and all of you new members here at Gideon's Tactical. We love you and appreciate you. So up till now, you're like, dude, this is like, you're singing this thing's praises. This is something that I'm connecting with. I wanna carry it. Guys, I love EDCing this knife. This is like, primo on the EDC list now that I bought it. I'm like, why did it take me so long? I mean, this has, it's just a great blending, great mixture of quality blade, great layout on the design that I like, lightweight, but large. I mean, it just, it's connecting with me on so many fronts. And this is the sticking point, the $85 price point that I paid for it. When I can look at many other cold steels that come in at either way cheaper for similar materials, just want to give you an example here with the Cold Steel Voyager. Aus 10 steel, made in Taiwan, much larger. Going to have steel liners, glass reinforced nylon handles. So maybe not quite um, as high end, if you will, um, the, as the G10, but it's going to fill out your hand. I mean, it's a monster. This is not necessarily the most EDC friendly blade, but if you need a huge kind of like full handled, either utility or outdoor or self defense tool, the Voyager can get a lot of those tasks done. It's got a four, almost four inch blade, it's like 3.9. This thing comes in about 48 to 50 bucks, cheaper than the Airlite, and they almost have the exact same materials, particularly in blade, and it's an overall smaller package. Kind of like, huh, why is that? And at that same price, you can pick up a Cold Steel Recon with S35 VN steel, G10 handle, and it's gonna be a larger blade, thicker stock, all of those things. So it's a much heavier duty shirt knife. It's not as EDC friendly again, but you're getting a more premium steel and bigger overall capability for the exact same price point. And so I'm not understanding where the $85 price point is supposed to be justified with the Airlite design. And so that I believe is the one tripping point shortcoming of this blade is that for less money, you can get almost the exact same materials and a bigger overall knife if that's something that you need, or you can get more premium materials from Cold Steel for the exact same price point. So you're gonna pay for it, but if you're willing to throw down that $85 like I did, I think you'll be super pleased and it has so much capability for an everyday carry tool that it outperforms many other knives around that same price point or even a little bit more expensive because of its strength, durability, but also just lines, thinness, weight class, all of those aspects. So I just wanted to give you guys that food for thought today on the air light, what it has going for it, which is a whole heck of a lot, but what's one kind of sticking point and it's overpriced feature or, you know, layout, if you will. So uh, thank you guys. I look forward to hearing your thoughts. What's your feeling on the air light? Have you had good success with it? Do you connect with it? Are there things that you don't necessarily connect with about it? They do have a Tanto version. I forgot to say that earlier. So you can get it in a Tanto version as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm absolutely connecting with it. You're gonna see it in a lot more upcoming videos, con concept videos, things like that. It's definitely making the best of list this year for pocket knives, um, but uh, that price point, you're gonna pay for it and I don't really know why. So check out the other video popping up guys. Subscribe if you're not a current subscriber again, we appreciate that. And always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.